Welcome back, everyone. This week, I'm going to go through how I make my ponds, my lakes, my swamps, and basically just generic wetlands, because I do know that getting a realistic look to your water features, to your wetlands, can often be pretty difficult, and hopefully you'll pick something up by watching at least how I do it. So first things first, you need a base for your pond or your lake. So I took a piece of MDF, cut it out with a jigsaw, and now I'm going to take a Dremel, and I'm going to bevel the edges with the sanding tool, which is a nice, easy way to do this. I used to bevel edges with a hand sander, and it would take ages. A Dremel is definitely the way to go if you have access to one. So I'll go around, bevel the edges. It'll look a lot better when we flock it if we don't have a sharp, square edge. Just go around there, finish that. And now we need to create a bank. And if you notice, I tried actually using the Dremel to sand out the middle of uh, this MDF piece. It's a little, you can see I did a little bit, but it took forever and the effect was so gradual it really wasn't worth my time. So I would not suggest using the Dremel to sand out the middle. Just create an artificial bank with some other material, which you'll see I'm going to be using cork bark here. Specifically, those cork bark sheets that are used for bulletin boards and such. And so I'm just going to make a rough outline of where I want my bank to be for this pond. And then I'm just going to glue it down with some PVA. And we're going to be using a technique that I used when I made my cork hills is that we're going to be using plaster cloth made out of paper towel uh, to give the real finished shape or silhouette of the lake. So, yeah, even though this cork is standing out, uh, we're going to use the plaster cloth to give it a nice smooth transition between the board and the cork. So, here we are going ahead and adding our plaster cloth. So, the first layer of plaster cloth here is basically I'm bunching up the paper towel to create a subtle, subtle gradation from the lip of the cork. Just give it a nice slope so that it looks realistic. So, I'll be doing that on both sides of the cork. If you want to, you could have done this with foam and just spent hours carving out that gentle gradation or used uh, I don't know, a propane lighter or something like that. But I like how the plaster cloth looks. It kind of has a rounded, uneven feel to it. So it looks more like actual real ground. You know, ground isn't a perfect slope. It isn't uh, perfectly straight. So I do like the effect that the plaster cloth gives as far as how the ground has little subtle undulations. So after I am done making the slope for the bank of our river, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start placing larger sheets over the entirety of the pond here. So I'm just going to be ripping off large sheets, soaking it, and and giving kind of a smoother look to uh, to the pond. So here's there's my first large sheet of paper towel, and I'll continue around, making sure I also wrap around the bottom of the MDF. If you just end your uh, paper towel right on the lip, then as you pick up your pond over, you know, months or years, it, it can start kind of pulling apart your, your, uh, plaster cloth. So do make sure you take it and wrap it around the bottom or put a layer of plaster over it to protect the, the plaster cloth. And, and you also really don't want to do much sanding with plaster cloth, something I didn't mention in my last video. So now I just added some PVA to my dried plaster cloth and I'm going to be using Two different kinds of grit here for like the banks of the river. I'm using a really fine sand. It's almost like volcanic ash. I bought it from some hobby store. It's the finest grit that they had. And then for the rest of the, the banks of the river, I'm using just more coarse sand. Most of it is going to be covered in grass, but I do want a few pieces to, uh, to stand out as kind of rough, rough ground. And then to prime my pond, I'm going to be using this Camouflage Espresso Brown by Rust-Oleum. And I'm going to make sure I get a nice, even coverage, making sure none of that white plaster shows through, because that will give a really unrealistic look and make our painting in the future a little difficult if any of it's showing through. And now I'm going to use my airbrush to paint the bed of the pond. And I'm going with the Germanic Black Brown from Vallejo and just giving a nice coat to the middle. And then I'm taking some green ochre, also by Vallejo, and just spraying around the edges on the banks of the river where I think, like, the, I guess you would say the beach would be. And then making sure some of that yellow also makes it down into, into the pond itself, almost like the shallows of the pond. Now, I, I go a little bit overboard with this green ochre, and so 
to even it out, I'm going to go back with my Germanic Black Brown and spray over the middle one more time to make sure I do have a nice feel of depth to the pond. And oftentimes going over your terrain with multiple passes with your airbrush gives it a much more subtle and realistic blend of the colors. And so now it's time to dry brush the banks of our pond. And I'm only going to do one layer of highlight here because I am going to be covering most of it with pretty lush vegetation. So I'm going to use my usual titanium buff and go over both the part that I spray painted with the espresso brown and also the parts that I airbrush with that green ochre. And for the portion that is kind of, I guess, the beach of the pond where there's going to be gravel or sand, I do a heavy dry brush. I go over it one more time to make sure I really pull out any of that grit and differentiate it from the, I guess, the dirt uh, that's behind the bank. And so now I'm going to make some reeds for my pond or marsh here using my static grass applicator. So I'm using some Scenic Express 6mm static grass. I'm using, I believe, the spring and the fall blend. And I'm going to kind of make a oblong shape with some PVA glue, and then lay down a, a healthy dose of the static grass on top of it. And then I'm going to take this old brush here. Uh, I believe this is like one of those pig hair brushes that you can get from a, from your DIY store for like a buck a piece. And I'm just going to cut off a section of it, and then I'm just going to stick it straight into that clump of PVA and static grass uh, to give the the look of reeds coming out of, I don't know, some lush vegetation there. And I'm going to actually stick that into my pond so that when I pour the resin, the I guess the green sections of static grass will be partially underneath the the water, so to speak. And so now I'm going to make a variety of other just normal static grass clusters. I make them a little bit bigger when I do them myself. Like when you buy static grass uh, clusters from, I don't know, uh, army painter. They give you just small little circular swatches of them. I like to make them kind of larger and make them strange shapes. They look a little bit more realistic when you put them onto your terrain piece. And so really static grass applicator is just an awesome tool. So now that they've dried, you can see what our reeds look like. I thought about trying to make them into cattails, like gluing on some brown colored sand onto them, but I really just didn't have time for this piece. I might try that in the future, but I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. So now I'm just going to go ahead and glue down these large static grass clumps of 6 millimeter grass. Uh, with those three clumps in the water, I think that'll give it a cool effect once the resin is poured. And then after I'm done putting down these 6 millimeter clumps, it's time to put down my larger 4 millimeter static grass. So I just kind of put a bunch of PVA, watered down PVA glue around my clumps and I'm just going to cover it fully to give a really subtle change in, uh, in I guess, grass length. For a few of the cl clumps, I'll just let them, you know, kind of stand above the this two millimeter grass that I'm now putting down. So uh, I, I like, if you've watched any of my recent videos, I like having this nice subtle gradation in multiple stages of grass length. I think it gives a nice realistic look to your scenery. And so here I'm, I'm putting down the last layer of static grass. Here is two millimeter static grass. And I think this is actually foreground grass. I didn't have a really good two millimeter grass to blend with the colors I have from Scenic Express. This was the best I can do. I'll end up putting a bunch of coarse turf and also fine turf from Woodland Scenics to kind of blend the two different colors because as you'll notice, that light and darker green really do stand out against one another. I need to actually go ahead and just uh, bite the bullet and buy some of the Scenic Express 2mm stuff to go along with the rest of the static grass that I have. But until then, this will have to do. So I coat the entirety of the pond, all the area that's left over, leaving a few little splotches here and there for broken ground. And so now I'm going to put down some Woodland Scenics coarse turf. I like to put this stuff with the static grass because it's kind of rounded. It gives a nice break in the silhouette. It looks like shrubs or kind of weeds among your grass. And I'm also going to be putting a lot of this down to kind of break up those different colors, contrasting colors that I have among the strat static grass, that light green, the dark green. I need to break that up a bit. So I'm going to add a bunch of different kind of colors. And I think the end result will actually be pretty good. So I'm also putting that coarse turf around some of those reeds that I put down. They didn't kind of sit flat on my riverbed and there's kind of a lip to some of them. 
So by putting down some coarse turf, I'll be able to hide the fact that they're not quite sitting flat. Um, so that's another great thing. Coarse turf is great at hiding mistakes that you might have. It, it's a great tool in any terrain builder's toolbox. Bring it out. If you screw up something on your terrain, instead of redoing it, just cover it up with some foliage. So I'll go over this. I'll use several different colors. I'll use the medium green. I'll use a light green. Those are kind of my two favorites. And after I'm done with putting down my coarse turf, I'm going to go ahead and spray it with alcohol, put down a healthy dose of my scenic glue to lock down all of the static grass and the flock that I've put down so far. And it will also set the stage for kind of the final step in my flocking process, which is putting down some fine turf. I use blended Blended Earth and Burnt Grass by Woodland Scenics, and both of these flocks have a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow in them. So if you sp kind of sprinkle them very lightly over the entirety of your terrain, they do a great job of blending in all the disparate colors in your terrain, all your different greens and yellows. They'll kind of be tied together, and they look kind of like fallen leaves or, or weeds poking through your grass. And I really can't recommend Mixing static grass and traditional foam flock, I think it gives a really nice look. You don't have to just stick with one or the other. They're great in combination. So last thing to really lock down all the flock that I've put down is I'm going to give it a healthy dose of hairspray. Hairspray and watered down PVA or Mod Podge is really the way to go to keep your, your flock on there. So now I'm going to be adding the resin. So this is a two-part epoxy resin in Virotex Light, which I put a little bit of blue dye or blue ink in there. Uh, not a lot, and in fact, you won't, won't even really be able to notice it with the final product. I probably could have put a little bit more in there. So I'm just going to pour this, and you got to be careful when pouring this stuff. I'm going to pour a little too much in the middle, and as it sets, it will kind of bleed a little bit into my into my grass something i always forget about resin is when you pour it in the middle and over time it will set and uh and it will seem to rise on you so here is something that you shouldn't do which is add woodland scenics water effects to your pond it really does is not going to work for this i wanted something other than mod podge because i feel that mod podge over time when you set figures on top of them it can really kind of flatten the ripples on your water. So I thought with going with this stuff, Water Effects by Woodland Scenics, it would give me a more durable ripple for my pond, except this stuff dries not completely clear, and it looked like rapids were going on on my pond, and it was a pain to get that stuff off. It took me nearly an hour of setting a warm washcloth on it and then trying to scrape off all that water effects. I ended up even scratching some of the resin. It was a nightmare. So please do not use water effects, or maybe if you do, use only a very tiny amount. I have not used this before, and I was not happy with the effects. So here's my finished wetland, and if you notice, in the end, I did go and I put Mod Podge over the top of my pond surface, and I think it, it looks good. I should have stuck with it. I knew it w would work well. It was silly of me to kind of reinvent the wheel by trying something I had never really used before, but I don't think it's too noticeable. Uh, all the problems I was having with making those ripples on the surface of the pond. And if you notice, I also added some foliage around kind of the lip or the rim of the pond to hide some of the bleeding of the resin. I always forget, just pour less than you'd think, and as it evens out, it will work. I pour it again, too much resin, I always do that. Um, but I, I think I hit it pretty well, and I also use this new flock I haven't used before by Gale Force 9, which is this summer flower blend which I, I thought looked pretty good. So I am pleased with it. Hopefully you were able to pick something up from it as well and maybe learn what not to do when making your own lakes or water features, wetlands. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please do hit that subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you guys soon with some more terrain. Take care.